under which we will be bestowing uh, the Gap Life Member Awards today. It in no way diminishes the importance of this ceremony and of the honour that is so deserved by the two recipients. The first award, which is made to counsel of Tony Bisti. Tony, will you please come forward? <laughs> counsel of Tony Bisti's career in local government spans almost 40 years, commencing with his election to the former Green Ponds Council in 1972. He has served continuously in both the former Greens Ponds Council and the Amalgamated Council of the Southern Midlands since then, as Deputy Warden, Warden, Councillor, Deputy Mayor and Mayor. He was the inaugural Mayor of the newly created Southern Midlands Council. Tony has been a strong contributor to the GATT and the sector in general. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, if someone had said to me back in uh, April 1972 that I'd be standing here in the year 2020 receiving such an auspicious award, I'd have said, "Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't think uh, I don't think you uh, you'll be seeing that." But uh, with local government, uh, it's been a wonderful journey; it really has. And uh, uh, my wife and I have made some wonderful friends uh, through local government, uh, not only here in Tasmania, but uh, nationally. And uh, it's been a privilege to, to be a part of, uh, <coughs> of the family of uh, local government members. And uh, I suppose you could say that uh, uh, local government gets in your blood. And, uh, uh, this was told to me by a Southern Midlands Council some years ago. And he said, oh, he wasn't keen on standing there. He came to one day and he said, oh, he said, oh, this, this, this gets in your blood. He said, uh, I think I like it. He didn't stand at the next election, unfortunately. And uh, I don't know what put him off. I hope it wasn't that. But uh, it, it does, uh, <coughs> when you're serving uh, to, uh, for your community and uh, when you're making positive uh, progress, I think that's uh, the, the great part of that. Um, <coughs> I'd just like to say, uh, Madam President, how lucky I have been. Uh, this, I'd like to accept this award uh, on behalf of uh, not only myself but my wife Sue, uh, a long suffering elected member's wife <laughs> who's, uh, who's been there uh, for me for that, uh, and I must say, uh, when you said almost 40 years, it's actually almost 50 years, Madam <laughs> President. Uh, and it's been a long journey, but uh, Sue has been a stoic supporter of mine through thick and thin. Uh, there's been both good times and some not so good times, but uh, Sue has always been there and uh, I appreciate that dear. Uh, thank you very much. It's been uh, trying at times, but uh, in the end, uh, the result I think is we have a, uh, a municipality, a council and, and the staff that uh, the rate players can be just a crowd of. But anyway, that's, that's the life of local government, uh, and there are more positives than negatives, although we're going through very different times at the moment, but uh, that will pass. Um, I'd just like to say also congratulations to Nick, uh, well-deserved Nick. Nick and I have been uh, mates uh, for many years, and especially through the uh, Southern Tasmanian uh, uh, Councils Association, and uh, an extremely competent representative of local government and an extremely competent gentleman. Congratulations. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Nick has demonstrated great sector collegiality and representation through his career including through his representative role with Quadrant Super, through contributing to the National Chief Officers Group and the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors, and representing the sector on the Premier's Local Government Council Officials Group. Nick has always been willing to step up and support the GATT, providing input into a range of policies and projects, and most recently, 
Um, it's been my pleasure to work with him on the Charitable Rate Steering Committee and the Local Government Division's General Manager's Technical Reference Group to support the legislative review. During his time at the City of Hobart, Nick has overseen a period of unprecedented private and public development within the city. Again, a most worthy recipient, Nick, I am delighted to have been able to present you with your Life Membership Award and I would like you to say a few words to our audience today. Um, it's, it's, it's a mixture of um, deep honour and a huge degree of humility that I accept the award tonight. Um, it's an honour because um, I look at other people who have been awarded life membership the OGA and it's a list of people that I truly admire, uh, all of whom have made a significant contribution to our sector. And I think, you know, as Tony alluded to, it more importantly to our communities and that's what we're all here for. Um, to have some of those people here tonight as well, we've got life membership to further adds to the, uh, to the, to the honour of this award. And I'm truly honoured to be mentioned in the company of some of those people. I won't mention who they are, but they know. I'm also humbled by this recognition too, because there are so many other people who deserve thanking uh, for, for, for this recognition. Uh, you cannot work for so long in this industry and not pause to reflect on those who have provided guidance and importantly, I think, mentorship. Um, and helped you out in your career. It's, it's uh, been great to have Mum, uh, Andrea and Edward here today, uh, and unfortunately um, our eldest son, William, is uh, in lockdown in uh, Victoria, but I'm sure if he was here, he would have uh, enjoyed tonight's ceremony. He has got a face mask with Willie, as you so <laughs> um, My family's played such an important part of this journey, uh, sharing the highs and the lows, but always there was supporting um, uh, supporting word and, and a bit of so thank you to you guys. I also have a big thanks to uh, Brenna Armstrong and Andrew Paul and my Southern uh, Metro GM colleagues who provided me with so much support and mentoring over the years, uh, even through to today. Uh, it is usually these guys that I turn to or chat when things get a bit sticky, so thank you for their friendship and guidance over the years as well. Uh, as GM, I've worked with five other mayors, uh, Rob, Damon, Sue, Ron, uh, no one can forget Ron, uh, he was uh, Lord Mayor for six months, and also now Anna. So, to all of you, thank you very much for your support and guidance. Every one of the Lord Mayors has provided me with a piece of advice uh, that I value, or done something that has improved me as a person or as a leader for this great council. I sincerely thank all of you for that, and I also want to pass on my gratitude and thanks to the elected members that I've worked with. Uh, it's great to see uh, so many of them here tonight as well. Um, I really do value the work that you do and I know every single elected member of the council that I've worked with and the current bunch uh, always put the community first when they're making decisions so I, I, I do value your support and your contribution to, 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 to the sector and to our community. And it is true that a bedrock of the Hobart City Council has been the mutual respect that officers and the elected members have for each other and whilst at times uh, those relationships might be tested, and so they should be. Uh, it's something that I know um, and I respect that the elected members understand the relationship between um, the elected members themselves and the staff and vice versa. So it is a strong relationship that has guided this council for many years and has helped our community get good outcomes from this council. Um, I'd also like to thank my executive leadership team, uh, both the past members and the current team, and particularly Heather, uh, who has been my deputy for the last 12 years. You are an absolute gentleman. Um, I'd stack my uh, executive team up against any executive team in the country. Uh, I'm so lucky to have the support from them, uh, not only from Heather, but also, as I said, Neil, Tim, uh, Peter, and Lee, and all the other people that I've worked with over my career. So thank you very much to you guys. I'd also like to thank.
thank those that have worked closely with me over the years, uh, particularly Fiona, Amanda, Kelly, uh, Jacko, and Margaret, uh, and all the team at HCC. We've had a few challenges over the years, I think it's fair to say, um, but importantly, we are more than colleagues, and we're all friends, and we enjoy each other's company and approach every issue, and no matter how difficult it is, with a positive attitude. I have a general mantra in the office uh, no stress allowed. And we've always approached every issue, no matter how complex or demanding, with that attitude in mind. As I said, uh, I'm truly humbled to have worked with such great people and fantastic staff at the council. It certainly makes my job a lot easier, and it's certainly been a pleasure to work with them. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank the LGAT for bestowing this great honour upon me. Uh, I've always been a supporter of Elgate. Um, I think they do a terrific job, particularly being a big body to 29 councils, 29 mayors, 29 GMs, and over 260 councils. Not an easy gig. Uh, never more in the history of our sector do we need a strong, big body as we deal with COVID 19, a review of the Act, the ongoing amalgamation debate, and the sustainability and resilience of our sector, uh, particularly defending ourselves, uh, as Christina mentioned, from the ongoing attack to our rate base. Um, we need a strong peak body. Christina, Katrina, GMC, and the team in Bilga provide that leadership. So thank you. As I said, this is a great honour. Um, I am truly humbled to accept it. So thank you very much.